On this episode of Loom with the Classic, rust proofing film from the inside of the sill. Welcome back to Loom with the Classic, and if you're new to my channel, I hope you stick around and consider subscribing. I put in videos every week on some Jaguar and Classic car related content. Like you saw in that little intro in today's video, we're going to start the rust proofing on my daily driver 1975 XJ6. It's off the road at the moment with some head gasket issues, but that's all been resolved, or almost resolved. I'm just waiting on the last bit of parts and we start cleaning everything up in about a week or so. Hopefully there's a video on the channel of everything up and running again. But I thought that while it's parked now, and it's in a small space with no other cars around it, it'd be a really good time to um, start rust proofing it, because winter is coming pretty soon. Even though I try and keep this thing inside as much as I can, I do drive it you know, every day in all kind of weather. So it's going to be you know out in the rain and snow and everything, so I do want to make sure it has good rust proofing. The car seems to be in really good shape. I think it has been rust proofed pretty well in the past, but it's always good to have a look at it again. So today we're going to start with what I think you should start with, with rust proofing, working from the inside out. So we're going to start with cavity wax. And this is the one I'm using now. It's uh, just I made a mode tip, it's hollow, um, called section wax and rust prevention. There are many, many types of cavity wax, but really, I found that most of them are pretty, pretty similar. Um, however, with other rust proofing things like under seal and stuff, I really think that there are some brands that are much better than others. But this is just my personal opinion, and I like this one because it is see-through, so it's really easy to see what the metal looks like underneath, even though it's been coated with wax. You can see how the paint is underneath the wax afterwards, and I think that is a big plus. And as you saw, I'm going to try and film all of this with a tiny little camera inside the sill as well. So while I'm spraying this, and it's atomizing everywhere inside. Hopefully I can catch that on a small little camera that will mount inside the sill. So I think that would be really cool to see, because I've never seen that before. Um, rust proofing film from the inside. So let's head over to the other little workshop and start rust proofing. The first cavity I want to fill with wax is the sills. And these are very, very important to rust proof. It's a common place for it to rust on almost any car because they're right there in the bottom and they get a lot of dirt and debris. But really common is that they rust from the inside out. Moisture gets trapped in here, sits on top, and then they just rot them out completely or your drain holes at the bottom, because there should be condensate drain holes here at the bottom. Maybe they get plugged up or someone replaces the sills without putting those back in. And you can have water condensation sitting here and these will just completely, completely rot out. So that's the first plan. I'm gonna fill them up with cavity wax. These have probably been replaced at some point, because at least from the outside, seems to be very solid like the rest of this car. It's a very, very solid car. But we're going to see how nice they look on the inside. I'm going to use that small little endoscope camera and we're going to use a plug that I found back in the wheel well over there I'll show in a bit. And I think that's a plug that someone put in from uh, rust proofing or something in the past. So we're going to have a look in there and see what it looks like on the inside. And then we're going to use the wand here or the tube here from the rust proofing kit I got to put in a certain places to fill this up. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that right now. As you can see, the tube is not long enough to go in the whole sill at once. Even if it would have a much longer tube, that would be really impractical just to pull it through the whole sill at once and try and get a good coverage. Because that's really what you want. It doesn't have to look pretty inside. You just want a good coverage on the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a couple of holes that no one is ever going to see. But of course, I'm going to plug them with these little plastic plugs. You can often get these at the exact same places so you get any type of cavity wax because Often if you find a car that's been well taken care of and cavity wax everywhere, you'll find these, either white ones or black plugs, sort of hidden in certain places where they've drilled hole just to inject wax. And there are a couple of them on this car, so I know that this has probably been done before with this car and why it is in such good shape. So my plan is to remove the sill plates up here, which I'll show in a little bit. Drill only two holes is my plan at least. So if I drill a hole somewhere here, you can see that the hose is going to reach all the way to the front and then, sorry, about that's how far it's going to reach back there. Then if I do the same thing here, drill a hole here, 
I will reach past that point I reached before and at the same time I will reach all the way to the back of the sill. So we'll open up this store, remove that sill plate, we'll drill a small little hole and I'll show you how we can just feed this in here all the way. And then let's open up that plug in the back, stick in the endoscope and see what the sill looks like on the inside. So my idea is that the hole should be pretty easy to get to, but at the same time you shouldn't really notice it. So on this car, you have these decorative sill plates here. This one has seen better days. Um, a little scratched up, but that doesn't really matter. It's just held in place with the four screws here. I'm going to start removing those, and then underneath there, we'll be able to see the top of the sill right away, and then we can see where we can drill the hole. Okay, all the screws are out, so this should just lift off. There is a little bit of metal plate in there as well. We'll just set this to the side. And here we can see this area. And the good news is that now that we've removed it, we can also see that there is some type of sticky residue here. My first of all was water, but it's definitely some old type of wax or something. So that's some remnants of wax being here before. And that's also my plan that when I put this cover back, I'm just gonna put some paper down here to protect the interior. And I'll spray a little bit of wax under there as well because you can never put too much of this wax anywhere. So once again, here's the little hose or wand. So I'm going to try and figure out, I want to go all the way, of course, to the front of the sill here. And then I want to be able to reach a good ways back here as well. So I think somewhere right in here is where I'm going to drill the hole. Here's a closer look at that hole. I am of course going to clean it up a little bit and I'm going to paint around the edge when I'm done. When that paint is dried, I will spray some wax in this whole area, put the plug in place, and then that will be nice and covered by the sill. And then, you know, next time I want to do this, I can easily just remove the sill cover, remove that plug, and there's a good hole. If you see here, there's evidence of rust proofing in the paths. There is a hole there to inject wax probably up here. There's one there to inject up in on the windscreen, I think. You have one down there as well. There's one here probably to inject wax up in here. So someone's definitely done all this before. And they probably used the big hole back there I'll show you in a bit to do the sill, but because I don't have such a long hose, this is what I'm gonna do. And in my opinion, I think it works better because then I know I can get more coverage. So I'm gonna measure out and do the same thing on the rear door under there. So we have two holes, one on each side. That should let me cover the whole area. And then we'll have a look at that plug, which I just took out. See if we can see inside the sill with the endoscope. All right, I measured everything out and I drilled a hole here in the rear part of the sill as well. And if we have a look inside here, I removed a rubber plug, I'm showing a little bit off camera. Just held in place with some sealant and an under seal on top of it. And on the back side of it, I actually found a little bit of a cobweb, so it seems like it's been at least really nice and dry in there. No water seems to be gotten in there, but we'll see that when we stick the endoscope in there. And I can't really get it to show up on camera, but if I get the flashlight to right angle, I can see some red in there, which I really hope is red primer, which would be great. I do believe that all these sills have been replaced sometime in the 90s or so. So hopefully they're still in good shape. But now let's stick that camera in there, the small endoscope, and see if we can see anything. All right, so here's that little camera, the light at the end. So let's see what it can see inside the sill. And that's the bottom. Here's the side. Try and keep this still, it's quite difficult. So the red I was seeing in there is definitely some type of red primer. That's great, it wasn't rust I was seeing. And you see all the yellow stuff in here? It's actually the wax. This looks a lot better than I thought it would. This looks really nice. Let's see if we can see the top. Once again, the red primer and just lots and lots of wax everywhere. I think the light I'm seeing over there might be the hole I drilled or I'm not really sure. But I'm not going to go in any further at the moment, but this looks this looks really, really nice because if it rots out, it's usually at the ends and I mean, that looks, that looks really nice. So I'm gonna get the wand ready and we're gonna spray in here and I'm gonna try and do what 
I sort of bought this camera for. See if I can film while I'm spraying, because I think that'd be a cool shot. It might ruin the camera, but that's why I got a really cheap one. So let's see if we can film why I spray in this wax. All the instructions here on the back, and I've shaken the cam for a bit, so everything should be mixed up. It also has a specific temperature range for treatment, between 15 and 25 degrees Celsius. I'm guessing if it's too cold, it doesn't flow well. If it's too warm, it probably flows too well and you pour it out of all the areas. So I've had a heat on in here with a fan for a while, so it should be around 15 to about 16 degrees in here right now. I've also had a can inside overnight, so it's, you know, room temperature and pretty warm. Last thing I want to do is remove this spray nozzle it comes with and put on this spray nozzle with the long tube. Put that on. I'm going to test spray just to see what the spray pattern looks like. Everything looks fine and we'll go over and see if we can film this being sprayed on the inside of a sill. So I'm outside in this container. I just want to see what the spray pattern looks like. So I'm going to hit the can. And that spray is really far. So sprays in a lot of nozzles out of there. That's really going to get everywhere and penetrate like you want it to. So now let's put this in the sill. Since this stuff is really thin and meant to penetrate everywhere, some of it is probably going to drain out the bottom of the drain holes from the sill. And since I don't want to make a big mess on the floor, I'll lay down some cardboard underneath. Now, I'm going to take the hose and just try and feed it into the hole I made. Try and get it as far into the sill as possible. And now let's see if we can see it on the camera. Alright, let's put in the little camera. And there's the hose. There's the hole. And there is the nozzle. I don't want to get too close to hopefully not dirty up the camera, but I'm just in the hole there. So I'm going to start spraying now, and let's see if we can see any of the spray pattern. And as you can see, that's going everywhere, really coating the inside of the sill with wax. So now I'm going to continue spraying, and while I'm spraying, pull the hose back so we hopefully get a nice coverage everywhere. And that went completely white on the camera. I actually felt some come out there on the endoscope. That looks very, very nicely covered. And there's some coming out of the bottom here. See down there, it's already dripping out from the bottom of the sill. That's really good. So I'm gonna remove the camera, the endoscope from this end now. We'll put some wax in from that hole. And then I'll just continue down the sill so we have a nice even coverage everywhere. Then we'll put the endoscope camera in again the end and see if we can see the new nice covering. So I just sprayed from the back here as well, just about 30 seconds ago. So if you have a look inside here, you can still see the sort of fogginess in there. And that's of course all the wax sort of going away. And that's really good because that means it still has a chance to land somewhere, hopefully creep in somewhere. And see all the droplets and everywhere. And it's pulling up here in the bottom. It's all really, really good. So this was well wax covered before. I did not know that. But now any area that wasn't covered well before definitely should have wax in it and it can creep around and find its way and hopefully keep water and moisture out of there. So I'm gonna continue doing the rest of the sill. When I've done everything once, I'm gonna go over and do the other side. Then I think I'm just gonna hit everything just one more time again. Just make sure it's completely, completely covered and then it'll have to sit here and dry, you know, for a couple days or so just to let everything pour out if it needs to. The next place I'm going to try and rust proof is the inside of the doors. On any car, it's very common for the bottom half of the doors to rot out. And that is because when it rains, water will go down the channel gutter here on the window and pool in the bottom of the doors if the drain, you see one over here, are blocked or missing. So sometimes when someone restores a car, they forget to put these in. On these cars, you have a drain here, and there's one there. One over there, and I believe there's one in the middle as well. We can have a look at that in a little bit. They get blocked out, and then all of this just gets filled up with water and, you know, if you're unlucky, salt or anything. And then it just sits in here, and it rots from the inside out. And you won't really see it until it's too late. It'll start blistering on the outside of the paint in here. And sooner or later, you'll need new doors. This is really, really simple to rust proof, actually. All you need to do is remove the inner door cards. Once again, I think it's good to have access. Of course, you can do it with the one up through here, but we want to remove the inner door cards so we can access the inside of the doors to see if it 
looks like there's any rot in there or not. And also, we're gonna clean them out because if there's any debris in here, we wanna vacuum that up so that that can't really get stuck with the wax and then plug up these holes here. So then I'm just gonna remove the door card and then we'll see what it looks like on the inside. And here is the inside of the door. And this looks actually really nice because they've done what I like to do. So any of these open areas, I like to cover with some plastic and some tape. I usually use duct tape instead of masking tape just so you can minimize the amount of rainwater that then hits the back side of the door card because that is uh, that will really easily just fill up water and then your door card will not look so nice and the inside of your car will be really damp. So this is a great idea. I also like to spray the back of the door cards actually with this kind of wax. It helps protect it and make sure it doesn't you know, warp and gets all moist in the future. So I'm gonna remove all of this tape, but I'm gonna keep the plastic because that looks really good. And then we'll put it back again with the new tape once this is all done. With that plastic removed, I found something I haven't seen too often on these cars. One more piece of plastic. It's probably just put in by the same people who put the other plastic in here because it feels it feels pretty much the same. So they hooked it up up here somewhere. And it's on this side of the glass. So it's just to protect any more moisture from getting in the car, which is not a bad idea. So I will have to remove it a little bit to assess the inside of the door. And there's a lot of wax in here, just like we found in the sill. So it looks very well taken care of. However, as you see, there is a little bit of debris down here. It's, um, uh, there's some rust flakes, which we'll, not really sure where they're fr coming from, but judging from that, that's a little bit rusty right there. The spring for the power windows, that's maybe where it's coming from or somewhere else. So I'm just gonna get a small little vacuum cleaner in here, vacuum out all of this, and we can start rust proofing in here. Even though it looks really, really good, we will fill it up with some nice fresh wax. Here's another little tip. If you wanna use a vacuum cleaner to suck up any dirt in small, hard to reach areas, really the easiest way is take a piece of normal garden hose or any hose really that's small, put it onto your vacuum cleaner with just some electrical tape. Works really well. And then you can get it in to really small, small spaces. And it is surprisingly efficient. Now that's a lot cleaner in there and there's no loose debris, time to put some new wax in. Once again, I've laid down some cardboard because if you do a good job, you should have some wax pouring out of the drains down here, which I've already checked underneath. They're clear and that's no problem at all. So that's one of the first things you should do as well. Make sure that the drains are clear and that you have drains so no one has removed them in some way of restoration. If they have, find some good low points and drill out some drains. The good thing if you can is to drill them from the inside out because if you drill them from the outside in, you will get a little lip uh, where the drill goes through and water will collect there. So if you can drill them from the inside out, that is really the best way. So I'm going to use both the little nozzle that we used before. Uh, which sprays in all directions and just the normal spray head on the can. So I'm going to start with the little nozzle we had before. So the most important part is, well of course you want to get everywhere but into all the little nooks and crannies that you can. So I'm going to see, will that fit up in there? No it actually won't. So I'll have to take that from the inside. So move my cardboard over a bit and shake up the can again. And let's just start spraying in here. And you can see it's already pouring out of there. That's good. And move up here. And yeah, this is, is gonna get pretty much everywhere. If it gets on any of the mechanism here, it's not really a big deal. You can try that off afterwards. And this is also a really good time to lubricate any mechanism. So when all of this is done, just put some lubrication and everything and you should be fine. Since I have this piece of plastic here, I'm gonna try and get the wand in, of course, on the other side of the plastic so I can actually rust proof the metal in here. When I'm happy that I've gotten everything as far up as I can, I'm just gonna to switch to the other little spray nozzle and I'm basically gonna try and fill 
the bottom here with wax. Now when all of this is done, you can of course go through and make sure that all the drains are clear if they get filled up when this hardens, but usually that doesn't happen. A little while later, and I've done the rear door as well. Basically the exact same procedure. Uh, I went through all the little holes in here just to get wax in everywhere, and I think it worked well because I have some nice drips there on the cardboard, and it's starting to solidify over here. I mean, it's still you know, wet to the touch, but it's starting to stick in places, and I think it had good coverage. Once again, I found that the condition of the door was really good on the inside, so I think that the cavity wax has been applied before. I don't know how many years it's been applied there or when it was done, but it's definitely done its job and prevented any rust to start. And now just, you know, helped it along. It put a fresh coat on there, so if it's cracked somewhere or it got washed away somewhere, we have fresh wax everywhere. We continue to protect this car. Because so far, I haven't really found any rust on this car, which is really, really great. So one other thing I do recommend, if you can, keep the doors open like this for a couple of days, or at least a day to let any of the access, uh, you know, fall out. Let everything solidify and then you put the door cards back on and you're good to go. Don't forget to put any of this plastic back on. If you don't have any plastic, you can, you know, easily buy some of this at a hardware store, cut it and put it back in there. I really do recommend that. And uh, yeah, another good way of keeping it open is some of these products do smell a bit and then you don't really get that smell in your car. However, this one I used by Motip, it doesn't really smell. It smells pretty nice, I think. Of course, it does have some smell because it's petroleum based, but I thought it was a pretty pleasant smell actually for being a rust proofing wax. Now you may be wondering, well, where else can I use this? And basically everywhere. Everywhere there's a hollow cavity you can get to you should fill it with this because that will really, really help your car. So, you know, this has been done in the past on this car. So you can see plugs in many areas, one there, one over there. You know, you can remove plates like this, get it in here, up in here. So just anywhere that you can find this, find an area to put it in, you should. But if you're wondering, you know, specifically about these cars, you know, the XJ Jags, um, you know, up in, into the pillars is a really good idea. Um, you know, as far as you can. Here, it's really good to remove the rear lights. You have the fuel tanks here. And, you know, you get double skin, you get a condensation in there. So, as much as you can spray in here around the fuel tanks from both sides and from underneath, if you can as well, by removing that cover, you'll get really, really good rust proofing up in there. So just, you know, use common sense. Any, anywhere that you think you can get, you know, a drill in, make a small little hole, Put one of these plugs in afterwards, then you know, use it to your advantage and fill anything up with wax. So, what of course I'm going to do now off camera, once all this is dried a bit, I will remove some of the wax around that hole. I'll clean up the area, I'll put some rust proofing paint around that because we have fresh metal there. I'll let that dry, I'll spray some wax around there, put the plug in there, and I'll be good to go. So, that's it for now. Let's head on back to the workshop. And that's it for today's video. I thought that went really well filming on the inside. I mean, it wasn't the best quality uh, endoscope camera, but it did get a cheap one on purpose because I wasn't sure if it was going to survive this, uh, but it seems to be fine. I was able to wipe off everything and it's still functioning, but that's why I got a really cheap one just because if it was going to break after one video, I didn't want to do that with an expensive one. So now I want to try some other things with that camera as well, like putting inside gas tanks to see what they look like on the inside, the condition. So well, let me know if you want to see that, more stuff done with that camera, which I uh, would not do with a more expensive camera, but with that one, eh, it doesn't really matter. Also let me know if you want to see the next part of the rust proofing series, which will be uh, just the underside of the car, floor pans. We're also going to have a look at... Um, you know, in the wheel arches, and just everywhere underneath the car, basically. So please let me know if you want to see that in the comments down below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot. And until next time, I'm Adam, and this was a little bit of a classic. I'll see you soon.